And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're going to get back into a new book today, Philemon. Philemon means affectionate. And I suppose that would apply because Paul was very fond of this person. Now, let me, let me lay just a little groundwork so that you get more out of this short book because it's going to be over with before you know it. Uh, Philemon had a slave that uh, among the Colossians, and the slave decided to take a night freight to Rome. If, if they had had a, he, he took flight to Rome, and he ran away. And needless to say, um, it, uh, Philemon no doubt was a little unhappy about this situation. He certainly wasn't one of the most popular people in Philemon's eyes, this slave wasn't, but while he was in Rome, he came to, by no doubt God's direction, to meet Paul. While Paul was yet in prison, Paul converted him. And boy, he took to the word like, I mean, just like a duck to water. He loved God's word and became very dedicated. And uh, it is believed by some that uh, Philemon was the, was the, did the scribe work even on this book, be that as it may. But uh, Paul is going to write a letter back to Philemon about this slave. That's kind of what it's like. And there is a deeper message within it. And we'll get to it as we go along. Having said that, Philemon, affection and a word of wisdom from our Father to understand and absorb in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 1 which is all there is, and verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow labor. Now, you know, I, get, I can't help being a little bit amused at Paul's style here because he's buttering this old boy up, you know. I mean, dearly beloved and fellow laborer. I mean, he's, he's talking real good to him, real sweet, okay? There's a reason. Um, and to our beloved Althea, and of course, no doubt this is um, Philemon's wife, Althea, and uh, Archipp Archippus, which no doubt is his son, it's believed by most, our fellow soldier, and to the church in the house. So they held church in their home the home in which this slave had run away from. And no doubt Paul loves this family very much. I don't want to, I don't want to leave the impression that Paul is trying to con or trying to pull the wool over these people's eyes because what, what Paul asked for is honestly he has a right to, okay? But I do like his style, though, okay? Verse 3, Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a good salutation for, I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers. That I always remember you in my prayers. Five, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. And no doubt the name affectionate Philemon is very fitting for this person. Verse six that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. That, um, that um, others would be reconciled to Almighty God through this man's faith. And I'm sure they were, because again, he had church in his own home. Verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Now that's laying it on really good. The very, from the very uh, saints within, that's to say the soul that dwells within these flesh bodies, you touch that part of men. You ever known anyone like that? He was no doubt a gifted teacher from Almighty God, that he touched the very inward being of the people. 
and and uh, the people would be refreshed by him. So again, Paul is he's getting a little personal here. He's laying it on with a wide he's painting it on with a wide brush. Okay, eight, and I, and I'm not saying it's not true. I'm sure it is. Paul wouldn't stretch the truth, but he's making sure he includes all the descriptive uh, nouns and verbs that might uh, lead up to getting on the better side of this old boy. Verse 8, Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient. In other words, I'm, I'm going to be real bold because I'm going to ask you to do something for me. And I think this is the reason he was painting with the wide brush is because of this question. Nine, yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such as one as such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. In other words, I've been in this service a long time. I've been getting on long in years, and for love's sake, because I love you, see, Paul had even saved his life. He owed his life to him, especially his eternal life. So the old boy owed Paul quite a bill. That is to say, when you when you ask for the chits to call them in whenever someone owes you a favor or something, Paul had the way the greater upper hand on this one Philemon. Uh, because uh, he, Paul had converted the man, and he had built, uh, through Paul's teachings, this wonderful work, and it had, re had developed him by a gift from God, a refreshing character that could affect effectually teach God's word. Verse 10, here it comes. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. In other words, um, he called him his son. To let him know I'm, I feel real close. He's a spiritual son because Paul converted him while he was still in bounds, meaning I'm still in prison here in Rome. <clears throat> and converted Onesimus. That's important that you know what Onesis, uh, Onesimus means. It means profitable. And there will be a play on the that that is unprofitable and that that is profitable. Okay, And that's where the meaning comes in for you, and that's why this little short story of a slave having run away and is reclaimed by the Spirit is in the Word of God for you to learn from it mightily. Verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable. There's a play on his name. Not profitable, but unprofitable. But now profitable to thee and to me. So Paul's kind of making his mind up there for Philemon, that though Philemon no doubt has some bad feelings toward this uh, one that ran off, I mean, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind but what Philemon had furnished him a good home. Because from, by Paul's description, he's just that kind of person. And there probably wasn't much reason for the man to flee other than perhaps the act of slavery, be that as it may. That's why we're brought to this point. Why would God place one little chapter in a little book, one chapter long, about a particular man having run away and being reclaimed, converted, in the Word of God. Because the deeper meaning is this. We are all, at one time or the other, most of us anyway, slaves to this world. From, from within, the bowels of man, that means the inside of man, even the spiritual soul, is a slave to making it in this world at whatever cost. Man, got to make it. Got to make that dollar. Got to do this. Love to fish, 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 fish. Love to hunt, hunt. Love to do it all. Just absolutely enslaved to this world age, to the things that one loves to do or must do, and just doesn't quite find time for God, nor do they really want to. Let's be real honest about this. They're slaves to the world because they choose to be. 
and naturally the the uh, moral to the thing is is that a great teacher such as Paul in teaching him the truth concerning the unmerited favor provided for us by Jesus Christ from the Father, that gift of freedom, the fact that to accept that beautiful gift sets us free. You want to be very weary of someone, leery of someone that teaches you a Christianity that puts you in chains, okay? That's to say that Christianity itself puts you in chains, not teaching of the word such as Paul was, that put him in chains, but it, it um, uh, certainly uh, the truth of Christ never put Paul itself in any bondage. It set him free, for to learn the truth, and the truth will make you free. Free indeed, because when you gain that maturity in Almighty God, you break those shackles of slavery to this world and you step forward as a new creature, a new man, a new woman, a new child, free. Free born in Almighty God, for He is your Father. He created all. And that's the reason this story is here, is to give you the example of how you can absolutely enslave yourself to the world and the buck if you're not careful. God's Word, Paul being the, utilized by Almighty God more than anyone else in writing the New Testament, that you would have this example of love, compassion, and what a difference it makes in the lives of people. So, Paul will continue on, again remembering Onesimus meaning profitable, and Paul says, hey, I, I know he was unprofitable to you, he ran away. But he's changed, and now he's profitable both to me and to thee. Verse 12. Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is mine own bowels. That is to say, I'm sending him, and you receive him as if he were Paul in person as if he were my own self, because it's his, his spiritual child. Now this puts, that's asking quite a bit. Stop and think about it now. Here he's a runaway slave. He's being sent back and no doubt is going on his own cognates, his own will, back to, to uh, Philemon. And Paul's giving him a pretty good set of credentials. Listen to it. 13, whom I would have retained with me. I would have kept him myself, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. I guess what Paul is saying here, I'd really rather have kept him here with me because he's been a big help to me while I'm here in prison in my ministry. He's a real worker. We're getting it done. Okay? But, 14, but without thy mind would I do nothing. In other words, if I didn't have your approval, if I didn't have your okay on it, I wouldn't do, I would do nothing. That thy benefit, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. In other words, I'm sending him and I, I, in a way, Paul's already asking for him back. But he said, I wouldn't do any, and that's the way Paul was. Paul wouldn't take advantage of anybody. That's why he never took money for himself in his ministry. He was a tent maker and made his own way because he wouldn't be beholden to any man. And um, I, I like his style. I really do. But here he's sending the man back, and he's saying, I, I want your approval, and I want it to be willingly. Now, bearing in mind all this time that Philemon owes Paul his life, not, not only physical, but spiritual. Again, Paul having taught, 
touched with God, of course, doing the touching and the gifting. But it's changed his whole life whereby he has church in his home. His son, his wife, are no doubt a part of it, else Paul would not have included them in the greeting. So Philemon owes Paul a great deal. And Paul's kind of drawing up a hard case. Whether you're, I wouldn't do it unless you're willing. Well, was he owing, was he owing Paul that much? It'd be pretty hard to say no, would it not? 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, he sure did, that thou shouldest receive him forever. I like that. He departed for a season, but what happened during that season causes you to regain him forever. That means the eternity. And that's what happens when you break the slave chains of the world in your life and let God become number one in your life because he deserves it. You talk about affectionate because, you see, it is your affection that God wants. And never, never, never allow the things of this world, especially those things that are habitual, Take the place of Almighty God and the spiritual life that you have because within that spiritual life and within that freedom comes to you all the power and authority and success and prosperity, not only for a little while, in the season on this earth, but forever, for the eternity, eternal life. So you see, being a slave to this world age can be very expensive to you. It can be so expensive you can lose everything. And it's, I hope you caught the fact that you can lose it because it is yours for the taking. It's free. He paid the price. It was an awesome price. He paid it. But that gift of salvation is free. And it sets you free. It sets you free from many things of this world because I'm going to tell you quite frankly, many of those things that you might have thought were habitual in him become of not such great importance. Now, there are things that if you are hooked on them, it's tough. I'm not trying to soft pedal it. All I'm saying is there are things that are much better. Because with, with that affection toward Almighty God comes the power and the authority. What, what authority am I talking about? The authority to tell Satan and his little demons to take it and shag it to beat it, to get out of your life, to leave your children alone. You, you, you carry a big stick spiritually. You are somebody with that authority. That authority is very important when you exercise it. Being a Christian is not just a novelty. It's power. It's authority. And it's freedom, free from the hang-ups of this world. This isn't to say you're not going to enjoy this world. Do you think Paul didn't enjoy this world? Of course he did. He enjoyed what he did. Do you think Philemon did not enjoy this world? Of course he did. He had church in his home. His family was uh, well-founded in the Word. He was, he was very joyful and had peace of mind and happiness. Why? Because they practiced the authority that Christianity brings you. <clears throat> One that accepts Christ and does not accept the authority has not been taught. You're missing it. You, you were converted part way by a short-circuited preacher if you didn't come into the full knowledge of, of uh, authority and the blessings of God. And it comes from the work that you do as a servant, as a slave to Almighty God, 
that being a slave that sets you totally free and makes you somebody. So what Paul has said here, he ran away from you for a season, and I have no doubt Philemon was very upset with the man. But now Paul says you've got him forever, for the eternity we're going to have him with us. 16. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Hey, Paul drives a hard bargain. He really does. He, he said, let's, let's face it. He's much more. He's now a Christian brother. And a good one at that. 17. If thou count me, therefore, a partner, receive him as myself. Whoa. Paul taking a little unfair advantage? Not really. He, he owes him. It's good. Paul was, hey, it was really something for Paul to walk into a community. Paul established these churches, basically. I mean, he was, he was God's servant there. And needless to say, they truly respected Paul. And, and they knew what Paul went through. Uh, shipwrecks, beatings, uh, bitten by serpents, uh, and shaking them off unharmed because of God's protection and the authority that he possessed from Almighty God. Paul just getting right down where the rubber meets the road and said, hey, if thou count me therefore a partner, and certainly Paul was because he'd converged him, receive him as myself. That didn't leave uh, Philemon much of a choice, all right? If he loved Paul, he had to take him back with love. 18. If he hath wronged thee, if he owes you something, and he did, there's no doubt about that, or oweth thee aught, Put that on mine account. And uh, he owed Paul everything. So what could he say? Welcome uh, Onesimus. That's all he could say. Profitable slave. 19. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand, and I will repay it. I'll make it right with you. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. I won't even bring up the fact that you even owe me your life besides all this. Because he did. But uh, again, I, I enjoy this side of Paul that um, I suppose it shows us in utilizing this one man as an example at the zeal that Paul had for saving lives for bringing people free from slavery of the world, for teaching and releasing the shackles, even though he was in bonds himself at this time, that he would free. And how, through the New Testament, many people have been freed from slavery to this world age, to this flesh, to the ways of this world to filthy lucre, to all the pitfalls, set them free. And not only setting them free, but through the power of Almighty God, giving them control and authority and prosperity. Because in serving God, God's blessings flow. That is prosperity with peace of mind. Many people can find prosperity, but peace of mind will never follow ill-gotten gains. Always got to look over that shoulder. Always got to worry. Always got to be on a guilt trip, where even if they have no conscience, they think. But prosperity in God's blessings has contentment and peace of mind. Why? Because you're free all the difference in the world. You're free. Paul says, hey, you owe me, you owe me, man. And I love this man. He's a good helper. He's 
definitely converted to the Father, and he's free from this world. You, I don't care what he owes you. You place it on my account. And I have no Paul, doubt that Paul would uh, not say, well, you, you owed me so-and-so. We'll just count that even. No, he, he, would, he would pay up. He would ante up and then let Philemon go from there. Paul always paid his way. He saw to it. Verse 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Refresh my inner man in the Lord. Let me see this come to a good outcome. Um, it, is, uh, it is ironic that uh, let me have joy in the Greek is on in me, on in me which is um, the prime root of Onesimus. In other words, let me, have, let, let me have profitability. Let me see this. I want to see profit from this. Or he's saying even more than that. It will profit my very inner self, Paul says, my inner spirit as, as, uh, in, in the Lord to see that my fruit that rests within you, that is to say his conversion, I speak of Philemon, that that good fruit could be good enough to take in this one name profitable, and therefore they would all profit by this, the word joy or profit, whichever you is uh, uh, on enemy, uh, meaning the same thing. A play on words, kind of, yeah. Uh, Onesimus is kind of Latinized a little bit from the Greek, but be that as it may, there seems to be, this is one of the reasons that I think perhaps uh, Onesimus, as many of your King James Bibles will say, written from Rome to Philemon by Onesimus, a servant. Uh, I, I feel that's why you find uh, some of the names Latinized because he had went away from Rome, why he knew his way there, okay? <clears throat> so, it is amazing how God locks truth into the scripture, where that you can look deeper, and from that, find how you can have joy, even while you're in this world, but yet to be free of this world, as far as habitual things and sin are concerned to the degree that man is able to accomplish. We all fall short and certainly nobody is perfect, but we have that right and his forgiveness in all things. So let me have joy is um, on enemy, which is to say on Let me have that. Verse 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. <laughs> that kind of puts the final hammer to it. Paul said, I, I don't even have to write. I, I kind of know. I've got confidence in you, my good old buddy. I know that you're going to even do more than I'm asking you to do. What Paul is hoping, no doubt, is he'll turn him right around and after he feeds him and gets him back up in pretty good shape, he's going to turn him right around and send him back to work for Paul. Um, and I, if I remember right, he's mentioned in a scripture that does exactly that. 22. But withal, now here comes the final acts. But withal, prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. I'm going to get to come and stay with you a while. Above all this, and forgiving him and everything else, get me a place ready because I'm coming. That's kind of like, you know, saying leave it up to the imagination a little bit. I'm coming there to make sure it gets done right, <laughs> okay, and to repay and to fix everything up so everything's on the level and everybody's free and everybody has that joy. Paul's a good, uh, you know, uh, no wonder he's such a good teacher he knows psychology, and there's a lot of psychology used within that little book. I hope that you allow that psychology to be fruitful in your own life. 
and that you take account as to what extent you are a slave to this world. By that I mean the flesh world, not God's world, though he owns it, but the ways of the world. How, how, how are you enslaved to ways of the world? What you want to do is just take those old spiritual scissors and just snip it. By that I mean the ways of the world. Now, don't anybody start cutting on anything if you think that's what I'm talking about, yourself or anything else. We don't, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying drawing you a spiritual picture of how mentally you should cut yourself away from the hang-ups of this world and think higher. Think higher up. Do you, do you know what the word resurrection, do you know that it has three meanings? Resurrected means, uh, one of the meanings is, is to accept and, and um, uh, Jesus Christ uh, and his, his doctrine. That raises you to a higher level of thinking. You got it? That's what the word means. Secondly, it means to stand up for him. And to, that means Stand up means take a stand. You know, a lot of people go through life and never really take a stand. Oh, well, we'll see. I'll have a look at it. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. You know, the cause is the doctrine that gives you authority and makes you somebody. That's what this little book is about, is freeing you from any hang-ups and hey, don't worry, as Paul is a type, even if you would, of Christ and the Comforter within this little old book. I'll come there personally and see, you know, be sure and make room for me, I'm on my way. And that kind of gets the hustle in one's uh, britches there just a little bit to get things done right the way he is requested in love. 23. And now the salutation. There, salute the epiphrasis. Epaphras, it means lovely, my fellow servant in Christ Jesus. 24, Marcus, Aristarchus, the, meaning the best ruler, Demas, that's the governor of the people, traveling with some pretty good folk here, huh? Lucas, my fellow laborers. Now here's something that uh, as a linguist you want to pick up on, Lucas is the Latin form of Luke, okay? It's just simply poor, uh, old Luke there. And of course, Marcus is the Latinized form of old Mark. So we're talking about some people here that, um, but, but uh, then many might say, well, why was it done that way? Because uh, Onesimus wrote it. It's natural that one writes in the language they're familiar with, and we can see that it's been Latinized considerably. Why? That's why he went to Rome. He was familiar with the language, no doubt. One feels at peace where one can communicate. So um, we see there's quite a gathering there. That again is the big hammer that would cause Philemon to say, whoa, going to keep Paul happy. And I'm sure from his heart, knowing that Onesimus, profitable, had converted, that was his prophet also. He knew it. I'm not trying to take away from Philemon, but I love Paul's method of operation. It's gentle, persuasive, and I know got the job done, okay? So work on yourself that way. You don't necessarily have to work on someone else that way. Work on yourself that way. If you ever have trouble with something in your life, and you're just not quite man or woman enough to shuck it. You know, some people get little hang-ups, and they just, it, it just becomes a mountain when it don't amount to a hill of beans. Yeah, don't amount to a hill of beans, and it's just like Mount Everest standing before them in their little minds. Does that sound insulting? Well, if you allow a little problem of this world to become a mountain before you. You don't amount to much. You haven't seen the vision, friend, because God can lift you over that mountain just like that by the right frame of mind. You can be free from hang-ups, free 
from things of this world that your little old flesh will talk you into if you listen to it. That's the meaning of the book. 25, to complete the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Isn't it interesting that he said with your spirit, not body, not soul, but spirit, meaning think higher. Think on a higher level. Think above flesh and try to be a Christian. Amen. There you have the book of Philemon. I love it. I love it. I love to teach it. I really do. Because I, I think it makes me so happy to teach it because it does free us from the ways of the world and sometimes our little petty differences and uh, ways. What a waste. What a waste that we sometimes go through when we don't stop and think about Onesimus profitability. You do your own self out of something when it could be profitable to you, even down to friendships sometimes. Aren't people stupid? Yes, they are. Don't fall into the trap. Onesimus, profitability. Philemon, affection. The two go hand in hand to help you have a better life, a meaningful life. A mature being instead of some whimpering little poor me baby trip child. Onesimus, profitability. Philemon, affection. Put them together and find joy, which is O Amini. Okay? Fantastic. What a little old book. Thank our Father for it. Hey, we're just going to kind of, I think maybe tomorrow talk, I don't know what I'm going to do, but. We're going to fill in a day before documentary week, and I may just visit with you. Who knows? Don't miss it. Listen a moment, won't you please?